Hello, and welcome to another book adventure. That's a work in progress. Um, so in today's video, I wanted to go over my top five uh, oldest books in my little collection um, I've got going on. Um, and in fact, let me just organise them into order rather quickly. So I've reorganised the books um, in order from the youngest to oldest, although they're still pretty old books. Um, in fact, I think every book is about 100 years old. At least over... No, there's one book that's under 100 years old, but under 100 years old, but the rest are over 100 years old, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're going to start off with... And you've, made, you, you've seen... You would have seen these books um, in previous um, videos. Uh, in this video, I'm going to try and give a bit more of an in-depth... Um, look on the book and um yeah you know explain what i should use them for and, and how i use them and how i put them into my everyday life so first off we have chambers etymological dictionary enlarged edition um i was doing some research i was trying to do some research it's a lovely book by the way the pages are nice and um delicate and i mean i don't know if you can hear that but That sounds lovely, you know. The pages are all, obviously they're browned and yellowed by now. Uh, but, yeah, it's a very cool one. Uh, let me show you. It's a very cool dictionary that I have actually used. Um, whilst I write, I use this dictionary whilst I write. Um, so say if I need a word. Or a meaning of a word, or what have not, or I don't know a word, or I can look up a word um, based on what I know about the word. Um, yeah, this I did some research because there's no actual date in the dictionary, um, and it turns out this book is from 1924. Oh no, there is a date. Oh, I don't know if you can see that up there. It may be backwards, but that does say 1924. So this book is, okay, so there are no books uh, under 100 in this, little five books. This book is a hundred years old exactly, which is so cool. I mean, imagine, I mean, imagine having a book a hundred years old. The amount of lives and people this has touched and the amount of stories it could tell. Absolutely fascinating. Moving on. We have... Uh, the Chariots of the Lord. And there's a bit of a time jump here. The Chariots of the Lord by Joseph Hocking. It's a lovely little book. Um, and I picked this up at a charity shop for about, I think it was either 50p, about a pound 50 or something like that. And it's a lovely book. It's got lovely golden scribe lettering right there. And um, if we just open it up. But I love when people put their little signatures and stuff. Just open it up. Over there. Oops, that's bad. Oh dear. You can see the date is 1905. Very lovely book. Very lovely. Oh, I'll admit it with very lovely pages. Um, I don't know what Fleet Street. I don't know what this book is about. Oh, there's a little illustration. That's very cool. Illustration. But this book is 1905, so that would make it 119 years old. Blimey, that's, that's quite old. 119 years old. And, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful for its age. I mean... The pages are very high quality. It must have been a very expensive uh, book I mean, relative to 1905 currency and money. Um, but yeah, and it's lovely. I don't really read this book much, um, although I want to because it looks easy to read. Um, I mean, look at that. It's There's not much lettering there. Um, but yeah, I would like to get into this writing. Unfortunately, the spine um, has been torn off, um, which is a shame. But nevertheless, it's still such a cool book. So that was 1905. 
and there's not many time jumps now um, until we get to the last book. Um, and here we have Zemil's Extraordinary Adventures. And this is a little book. This is a very small, tiny book. I think, in fact, I think it was more of a children's book. Um, it's, it's very, it's very lovely. I mean, the, sp the spine's decaying, but I mean, it would do. This is a hundred and twenty-one years. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I can't do maths, but the front of the book is very beautiful. If we open it up again, I'll try and get better angles this time. You got get the side in. It's a Mills extraordinary. Let's say adventures, and then we've got 1902, which is very cool, um, and it's sort of like one of those anthology sort of adventure books you'd have as a kid, so I think it was um, The Wishing Tree, or The Magic Rocking Chair, or The Wishing Rocking something like that. There was a book that my mum would read to me um, before bed, uh, and this is a very, this is a lovely, and I actually recommend this book, um, if you're wanting to get, I mean, obviously, not this, because that would cost a couple of quid. Um, but if you're wanting to get your uh, your child a, a book to introduce them to reading, or get them into reading, or, you know, uh, fiction or what have you, I suggest this book. It's very easy to read. It's very much laid out for um, young people. Illustrations are lovely. I believe they're hand-drawn as well. I believe, don't quote me on that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, the pages aren't that big, you know, um, a chapter before bed, very beneficial for your child. Um, yeah, it's a very lovely book. I picked this up for about a pound um, in a local bookshop um, where I get to go all my books. I'm very lucky, actually. I live in a place where there's a where I can get all my books for a pound, which is fantastic. Because if I was in this for um, investment reasons, such as I buy books as an investment company, because this could sell... Uh, on eBay, a tenner, maybe, maybe a bit more. I don't know, I've not done much research into it. Um, but I could easily make ten times my profit minimum. Uh, but I don't, I choose to collect them and, and read them. Uh, yeah, very fun. Although, the and another thing, if you get this book for your child or another um, edition, or impression, uh, or no, it is edition, isn't it? Um, then it's got Roman numerals. That will teach a child Roman numerals. Not many people know Roman numerals these days. In fact, I even had to look it up for a couple of dates on books that I have. Anyway, that's Samil's Extraordinary Adventures. Penultimately, we have... Now, this is... I think this is one of the first books that got me into the whole book collecting thing. I've got a bad bag. Um, this is one of the first books that got me into uh, book collecting. Um, I was in a bookshop, a, a book, a bookshop. I was in a bookshop, and um, I saw this book, and I thought, "Wow, that looks one heavy and two old." Um, so I looked inside. I thought, "Wow, I mean, look at the pages. They look very sort of. They look like a tree. That's how old they are. They look like an actual tree. And they're very nice. Um, I've got to be careful because this is so old and fragile." The pages are very nice quality in that, but I opened it up. Um, and again, you can tell how old it is because it's got that. Um, I'll try and hold this up, uh, but I can't do, do my promise my best. I'm not an expert. Lovely bit of um, tracing paper. And then, oh dear, this is falling apart. This is my first marriage. <laughs> um, no, I haven't been married, thank you. I've got to be extra careful, um, but this was printed in London by William Heinemann in 1899. 1899. I thought that was fantastic how I owned something um, from the, or it was very late 19th century, um, but nevertheless 19th, 19th century. Uh, and that, this, I think this is the book, the book that started everything. Um, so that's quite incredible. It's a fa fantastic. I mean, look at that printed eagle. Um, I think that's in the bow of a pirate ship. Um, and the spine somehow still being intact. Although I think it's... I don't know if it had a dust jacket. Um, I have no clue. But it's, uh, it's a really cool book. And it's the first book that got me into book collecting. So it holds a special place in my heart. Now, 
lastly, the one you've all been waiting for, um, and you'll all be familiar with this if you watched my last video, um, but this is a holy, but no, I won't be reading this just to put it out there, I'm not Christian, although again, I respect all of the religions, I'm not Christian myself, um, I bought this simply for the factor of its age, and this is a holy Bible, which is very ironic, uh, it's lovely. I don't know why we moved away from the curved, um, sort of outward going spines. I don't know why they look so cool. Um, and it's got the original little cloth piece from uh, that time. And the book, I mean, look at that. It's, I mean, it's terrible condition, but it's fantastic, you know. I mean, look, look at this. You open it up. Let's see if I can open it up here. There we go, look at that. Um, it's Roman numerals, and the digits are MDCCCLXV, which translates to 1865. Now, that is the biggest time jump I think we've had between these lot. 1865, that's about 30-ish years older than this. This book is about 160, 150, 160-ish years old. Uh, give or take a few, obviously. I'm, again, I'm not good at math. Um, but yeah, so let's just take it, I'm going to be very careful because these pages are thinner than ice. I'm having to do a couple of time here just not to break them. But it's such a lovely book. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, and that, that concludes this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little book adventure. Again, trying something new, whether it works or not. Who cares? Um, yeah, my top five oldest books, 1865, 1899, 1902, 1905, and 1924. Although I do believe I got a book from 1923, but I couldn't find it. I hope, <clears throat> I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one.